how to increase your long runs, how to increase them safely and effectively so that you get the very most out of your running. Now, I feel like I can talk to you with complete confidence about this topic because I went from not being able to run 400 meters to be able to run in a marathon and then to be able to run in 100K and represent in my country. So if I couldn't run 400 meters and eventually began to respect the long run and what it would do for my endurance and stamina and got to a point where I could represent my country in 100K, you can do too. Number one, what is your starting point? Think about more recently, within the last couple of months, what is the longest run that you've done? For some of you, that might be 5K. For others, you might be used to going out there and doing 25, 30, 35K. Whatever your starting point is, realize that that is your starting point and we're all on a personal journey to get fitter and faster. Number two, slow down. It blows my mind. I will go out and run what I think is gonna be my recovery run or easy run and join somebody for their long run. And they are going way high into zone three, zone four way high on the effort level to a point that is no longer long slow distance, which they think it is. What they're considering is just the distance that they're gonna be out there or the time that they're gonna be out there. And so naturally, they're not gonna be able to go as far because they're already exerting way too much effort. So slow down, bring it into yourself and realize that even if that feels uncomfortably slow right now, it's only because you're used to running at the running pace you usually go out at. So if you're used to going out four times a week every other day and running for five, six K, and you always go out at the same pace, that's your running pace. That's what you've got used to. And what that's meant is you've become efficient at moving over the ground at that pace. If you then want to go longer and build that to seven K, nine K, 11 K, 15 K, we're going to need to slow down and make sure that we stay in zone one and zone two. To do that, if you think effort-wise, it needs to be conversational. What's gonna happen over the weeks and months as you improve, you're gonna become more efficient at moving over the ground. So for the same effort level, you'll be able to cover more ground and to be able to cover that ground faster. Number three gradually increasing distance or time that we spend out there doing the long run. Now, once you know your starting point, the golden rule is that you can increase 10% per week. And every fourth week, I like to bring it back to that base level again so that I can freshen up my legs and also psychologically you can get freshened up. The reason for 10% is so that you can take the adaptation safely. What we're trying to do at all times in distance running is avoid injury. Number four, we run our long run once per week. For most people, that's when they've got most time available. So it's a Saturday or a Sunday. My week is very simple. I love my intervals on a Wednesday and my long run on a Sunday so that there's a big enough gap in between for me to recover from the interval session and then hit the long run. Number five, plan your nutrition and hydration. For me, it's race day simulation. So whatever I'm gonna do on race day, I work back from that goal and implement that in my long runs, my interval sessions. So we have the same breakfast or the same thing that we're eating before we're gonna race and we have that exactly the same time or exactly the amount of minutes and hours before we're going to train hard or race hard. Then we're getting used to it. And we're also implementing the number of gels or the amount of carbohydrate per hour that you're having in sports drink into the long run too gives you the perfect example or the perfect simulation of how to take your energy gels or sports drink, how to get them into your stomach, but not just that, to be able to metabolize them, get them as energy to the muscles to propel you forward, which is gonna give you a much more accurate indication of what you can aim at on race day. Number five, fueling is key. And this is the perfect opportunity during the long run to have race day simulation. So think about the goal. What are we training for and what is that gonna look like? Is it just a breakfast before or are we aiming for a half marathon or marathon where we're gonna need to take energy gels or sports drink along the way? This is your opportunity to practice with that strategy. For me, that looks like an energy gel every 20 minutes in order to make 75, 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour and also I'll have exactly the same breakfast as I will be doing on race day, 
What we want to do is get to race day and it's just another day. It's just another training run. And that's how you feel because you're confident about your breakfast, you're confident about your energy, and you're confident about your race day nutrition, what the gels and sports drink you're taking within the race. Once you're used to that and you're confident that you can get an energy gel in and it's not just sloshing around in your stomach, but you're able to get it to the muscles as energy, then it releases tension on that spot and you're able to move forward with complete confidence. What you also need to do is the long run takes a lot out of you or it eventually will once it becomes long enough. So get in the good habit of doing a cool down and then having your post race nutrition or post run nutrition. And for me, that looks like five bananas blended in oat milk with pea protein, all the nuts and seeds, calorific, but it's exactly what my body needs at that time. Number six, choose the right route. Now it's long run. So you think, okay, let's get adventurous. Let's go exploring. And it sounds like the perfect time to do that. When in actual fact, the best strategy is to take a loop. And that for me looks something like a 5K loop where I've got a drinks table and I'm simulating again race day. So picking up a drink at pace when you're running at your half marathon or marathon pace or 10K pace, very, very, very difficult unless you've had practice with it or unless you really want to slow down and lose time. Or if you get used to it, not only are you practicing and having that race day simulation, psychologically, it also breaks it up. And so if your long run is 25K, which is five loops, it might get to 20K and you think, today's not the day. I feel a little bit of a twinge on my Achilles, on my calf, or you don't feel quite right in the stomach and you need to cut it short. If you've done an out and back and you're 20 kilometers away from home, that's gonna be difficult for you. So you can avoid that by doing loops. Number seven, be patient. It's about the long game, the training schedule at least of 13, 13 weeks. And so if your starting point is currently a long run of 10K, and the second week it's 11K, the next week's 12 and a little bit, and then back to 10K, it's gonna take you a number of weeks to really move that forward. And it's not going to feel like you're moving forward a lot week to week, but over the bigger picture, you are a completely different athlete. And not only are you used to going over the ground for longer periods of time, you've become way more efficient at it. You've tapped into that aerobic capacity that you're continually building, and you're making that endurance and strength work for you in all aspects of your running. It's extremely powerful. So there you go. We're all about optimal improvement on this channel. And if you want to move your long run forward and increase your long runs so that you can build more endurance and stamina, the key is to slow down, to be patient, and to fuel correctly. If you've got anything from this, please subscribe and let me know what's the longest you've ever run.